A cannonball is launched upwards from an initial height of 0.5 meters, and its motion is shown in the graph. What maximum height does it reach? Okay, so this problem involves a motion graph. Let's figure out what we're looking at. The horizontal axis is time in seconds, and the vertical axis is velocity in meters per second. So we have a graph of the ball's velocity over time, and the graph is giving us the coordinates, or values, for two specific points. Let's read the problem again and find the important information. A cannonball is launched upwards from an initial height of 0.5 meters, and its motion is shown in the graph. What maximum height does it reach? So the ball is only moving in the y direction. We know the initial position. And we want to find the y position at the maximum height. Now let's draw a picture. The ball's initial height is 0.5 meters, so we'll say y equals 0 at the ground, and up is positive. The ball moves upwards and reaches a maximum height. We also know that whenever an object is at the maximum height, the vertical velocity is 0. And we know the vertical acceleration will be negative g. Now, what information can we get from the graph? At the initial point, when t equals 0, the velocity is 25 meters per second, which is vy initial. Then the velocity is 0 meters per second when t equals 2.55 seconds. That's the point when the ball is at the maximum height. The ball starts moving upwards with a positive velocity, but it's slowing down. It reaches 0 meters per second at the maximum height, and then the velocity becomes negative and speeds up as the ball falls down. So which equations can we use to solve this? We could use this equation and say the final point is when the ball is at the maximum height, so we would solve for y final, and we know everything else. Or we could use this equation, which also includes y final and variables that we already know. Let's try using this equation first. The final point is at the maximum height, so we plug in 0.5 meters for the initial position, 25 meters per second for the initial velocity, 2.55 seconds for time, and negative 9.8 meters per second squared for acceleration. That gives us 32.39 meters for the final y position, which is the maximum height. Now let's solve this using the other equation. Instead of plugging in numbers at the beginning, let's try rearranging the variables first to isolate the final position, and then plug in numbers at the end. First, we can subtract vy initial squared divide by 2ay, then add y initial to both sides, so y final is by itself. Now we can plug in the values that we have for each variable. When we do that, we get 32.39 meters for y final, which is the maximum height. That's the same answer we got before. In the first equation, we used the ball's initial height, initial velocity, the acceleration, and the time it took to reach the maximum height. But you might have noticed that with the second equation, we didn't need to use the time at all. So we could have solved this problem even if we weren't given the second point on the graph. How are we able to find the maximum height only given the initial height and velocity? Well, in the second equation, we also used the fact that the velocity is zero at the maximum height. The acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, which is the slope of the velocity graph. So if the initial velocity is fixed and the slope is fixed, the velocity must be zero and cross the horizontal axis at a fixed time. So one equation uses the final time and one equation uses the final velocity. But either way, this is a reminder that a problem might give us more information than we need. So now let's check our answer. We got the same value using two equations, and we have the correct unit for position or height, so this is probably right. 